clean up in aisle seven. Clean up in aisle seven. <laughs> this is the fir first time uh, for ever podcasting from an Albertsons, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, sponsor, <laughs> sponsor opportunity. Sp sponsor opportunity. <laughs> Um, yeah, de de definitely, a, definitely a first for us. So I'm um, in Morro Bay, and just for those that don't know, uh, uh, there's going to be a 70.3 here next year. It was just announced uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So I'm getting a little pre preview of Morro Bay. Nice. And uh, I can tell you the water is very cold. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, it's got to be in the low 50s. Okay. I, ha I actually have a swim date uh, with a swim group on Sunday uh, at 11. They're called something sharks because there's a lot, there's a lot of sharks around here. But Frozen I figure, sharks. Yeah. But, I, but I figure I'm not the fastest swimmer, but I'm not the slowest swimmer. So if I'm going to be in a sharky water, that's where you want to be. Should be good. Yeah. yeah. Did you by any chance see the uh, triathlete that got attacked by the alligator video? Yes. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> You're going to be thinking about that. I know. It's funny because when I've raced in Florida, um, in Miami, the, the lake we swim in, or we, I swam in it three times. Um, there's sharks around because it's, yeah. it's just, or not sharks, it gators around everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Right? So after, I remember the, the first time we raced there, after the race, I was so hot. It's just mm. unbelievably hot. So I'm like, I'm going to go sit in the lake. Ooh. So I go down, sit in the lake and just, and there was other people and like a couple other people in the lake and we're just chit chatting. And then mm -hmm. this race official comes up, Hey, get out of the lake. You're, 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 if you don't get out of the lake, you're going to be disqualified. I'm like, we've finished already. Right. Wow. So we get out of lake and he's like, listen, like we've got to force this issue because there's <laughs> there's alligators and it's like, I'm like, what are you talking about? We just swam in here like three hours ago, four hours ago. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, yeah, but we had people in there like with jet skis and things yeah. like that. Like, and then <laughs> I'm like, oh good, maybe post signs. I don't know. Like, <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. I would not, because that water is probably not very clear, so you can't oh, you see, can see anything. anything. So you can see anything. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Well, <laughs> similar, not 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 almost almost the same, but same theme here. We I used to swim in Pensacola, off Pensacola Beach, and uh, then one time I was watching on the news, and a helicopter was uh, going along Pensacola Beach, and they were filming all the hammerhead sharks, maybe just fifty yards off the beach shore and I would swim parallel to the coast and I'm like that's about right where we were swimming and hammerheads are not friendly sharks they're not like your friendly nurse shark so oh man uh, I uh at that point that was uh the last time that I went swimming distance wise in the uh in the in the ocean right there off Pensacola <laughs> so, so yeah I guess it is interesting because you know we do put ourselves since it's in peril sometimes swimming right like I've swam in Australia and there's, yeah. you know, there, there's sharks, there's definitely lots of sharks there. And oh. I know people down in uh, South Africa that have done Ironman yep. South Africa, that's a big yep. deal. Even over in Perth for the, um, is it Western Australia? Mm -hmm. yep. Ironman, um, they've had to cancel several times. They have, yeah, that's right. So between sharks and alligators, uh, you know, <laughs> you know I, think it, Lake Mead, I think the dead bodies in Lake Mead are, they, know, sound, really, they sound really good. <laughs> yeah, they, they keep turning up. But you know, on one hand, I enjoy swimming in different open body waters. And uh, yes. for the most part, they are safe. Uh, but you know, there are there are things that you often need to be aware of when you're when you're swimming in open water is I do, you know, if I'm in a new area, I, I like to check with the local and ask about where to swim and where not to swim. And sometimes it's water quality issues. And sometimes yep. it's uh, it's you know reptiles and amphibious uh, critters in there that that I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're and and you're right. It's actually probably more likely like the microorganism danger is greater yeah, than yeah. the macro. That's right. Right, and That's right. and oftentimes we don't recognize that. You know, you go, oh, there's a, that looks like a nice lake. I'll go mm -hmm. for a swim, and you actually realize that actually you shouldn't be swimming there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Even though it looks, I mean, it looks clean. Yeah. And same and same with the ocean. You know, I, we were down in San Diego. It's beginning of summer. And, from Coronado South, the beaches were closed uh, mm. because of uh, bacteria uh, oh, in yeah. the water. Yeah, and you think, well, this is the Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. right? Like it should be, it should be clean. And so I think that, yeah, I think that oftentimes it's it's more of the things that are, yeah, microbes rather than yeah. Yeah. than animals that are, are are danger to you. Yeah, no, that's true. But it is it is sort of fun to go somewhere different, and and, and I'll even swim in different pools just to get. 
yeah. you know, out of the same routine of swimming in the same pool with the same black line and this and that. It is sort of uh, fun, but that maybe that's a good segue for what we I want think it's to a talk perfect about segue. tonight is yep. uh, motivation. Yeah, you know, it, it is such a good segue because I was actually thinking about this after we came up with the topic that we're going to talk about, you know, what motivates you to train or when you're having struggles, what motivates you to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and we've talked about this many times in the past. It's like, I leave Las Vegas a lot mm -hmm. and I leave purposely to go training and to find different places to train. And, um, you know, just the, you know, I mean, you know, in the central coast area this week, and swimming at a different pool, a outdoor pool, beautiful, clean. Um, we've met some nice people that are swimming there yep. and it's easier, right? Mm -hmm. um, than just the, you know, my normal Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday routine, which is fine. My routine is fine, yep. but this, this makes me more excited. Like this morning we were going to, we're driving to the pool and I'm actually like, oh, awesome. We're going to swim at that awesome outdoor pool again. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you're right. It, it, a little bit of, a little bit of something different can be very mm -hmm. motivating. Yeah, a little change in scenery, even for a pool. I and mean, it sounds silly, but you know, sometimes the the type of water treatment that they have is different. Uh, the gutters are different. The lanes yeah. are different. And sometimes just that, you know, mixing it up and or, or the people are different, and you you meet yeah. different people, and, and that you know, keep it fun, and and uh, and and that's a good way to to uh, to stay motivated. The best part about going to another pool is you're never sure exactly if the length is right. So when I'm swimming slow, I'm like, well, this has got to be 25 and a half yards yeah, this, or, or 20. This is this has got to be 26 yards because there's no way I'm swimming this oh. poorly. Actually, we swam there two days ago was the first time. And I think we did a two or three hundred. And I looked over to my wife and, I'm, and I said, Marie, this has got to be meters, right? And she's yeah. like, no, I don't think oh. so. Like, my time seem like they're meters. Yeah. <laughs> So in my mind, I'm just like, it's meters. It's okay. My time's okay. <laughs> They're slower. I'm, oh, not swimming. I'm not swimming well today. And that's, and that's fine. Well, the fact is some pools are faster than others. And, yep. you know, and again, it, you know, the lane lines, I know that sounds silly that I mentioned that, but the lane lines will influence in, in terms of how much turbulence or waves there are. And yep. I, but I, like you, I, I, there was a pool that I was swimming at and I'm like, this isn't right. So I actually brought a tape measure. I, I was the old guy who measured the length of the pool to confirm the distance or to refute what the distance was. So it was funny. A quick, quick side note on that one. So as far as going to other places. So last year when we were in um, Mammoth Lakes, there's a, there's a pool there mm -hmm. and it's at like 7,000 feet yeah. where the pool is. Yeah. So a group of us jump in and we're swimming and oh my gosh, my times were just horrible. So not only you're having a little bit more difficulty breathing because you're at 7,000 feet. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like when I'm just average swimming, I can do 140 per hundred all day long. So mm -hmm. I'm pushing it and I'm not making 150. Yeah. I'm like 155 and I'm just yeah. pushing. Well, subsequently, several of us are talking like, you know, this must be meters. <laughs> and sure enough, it was. Yeah. Like we, <laughs> and, I, and I will ask a lifeguard and they're like, I don't know. Yeah, like lifeguard didn't know, and then finally another swimmer came and like, oh no, this is a meter pool, and I'm like, oh okay, unusual, 25 meters. Yeah. And, that, and but at first, we're like, is the altitude that much that it's like? But it shouldn't matter that much in a short, like a hundred, right? Like, it's not right. like you're getting, you know, completely winded in a hundred. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you never, you do never know. It could, yeah. uh, it could very well be meters. And and it is amazing how much difference 25 meters is from 25 yards and. Yeah, uh, it, you know, I don't understand why the rest of the world doesn't use yards, but that's just the way it is. We're the only ones. But... <laughs> it's it's interesting because you know I, I go to Canada a lot because my family's there, and some pools are still their yards. They are built. Oh, before, really? Like, well, Canada switched to the metric system in the late seventies. Okay. And so, if a pool is older, mm. it will be yards. If it's okay. a newer pool, it'll be meters. Interesting. And um, so. And it's just a, once again, it's an idiosyncrasy, like, and the people, they, they know, like if you're, yeah. if you're swimming, you know, which one, which ones yeah. are which, but if you're just, Hey, look, where are we? Let's look up the local pool, which we yeah. tend to do a lot of, you could easily get yourself into a meter pool. Yeah. And, right. and, and it's, you're right. The times make a difference, but you can't tell, like you can't look at it and say that, Oh yeah, that's a meter yeah. pool versus it's just long. No, enough no, it, it is tell. just, yeah, just enough difference that your eye can't tell, but 
Yep. Now, in high school, uh, we actually would have one school that we would go compete against that was a 20 yard pool. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. So then all the events would convert over. So 100 yards, you just do five lengths instead of four, you know, because in high school we were competing in yards back then. And uh, but yet the times never still matched up because now you've got a flip turn and an extra. Flip yeah. turn. And so it all it changes the whole dynamics. And and even, yeah. you know, if you, you swim in a long course where, you know, we have a, at least one pool that does long course here, the multi gen 50 meters is different, you know, swimming in a 50 meter pool than 25 uh, meter pool. Yeah. So if you get the chance uh, and you're in Oceanside, there's an old pool there that's 33 and a third yards. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so three laps to 100. Oh, wow. There and uh, so Marie, when she started swimming in Oregon, she's learned how to swim at 33 and a third. Yeah, yeah. And so she's just like, oh, this is awesome. Like this is back in like when I was a kid. And they don't have that pool in Oregon anymore, but the one in Oceanside, I mean, it was, it was pretty fun. Like once again, changing the environment. It was yeah, super yeah. motivating. Yeah. I mean, okay, how quick can I do a hundred with two flip turns instead yeah. of instead yeah. of three? Yeah, right. And and that day just went faster because now yeah. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of something different yeah. and it's motivating me in a different way. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and I think for you know, we were talking specifically about motivation. Most of the triathletes that I know that I've talked to, swimming is a big issue, mm -hmm. right? Like getting motivated to go swimming is harder mm -hmm. than getting motivated to go for a run or for a uh a bike ride. Mm -hmm. And so I think these, these little tips we're talking about right now might actually be a thing that can, can help people, you know, even within Las Vegas, you're mentioning going to the multi-gen. Well, there's not very many outdoor pools in Las Vegas that are yeah, public. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, heading down, even if you live in Summerlin, well, maybe on a Saturday morning, you, you make the drive across to go swim out outside yeah. and it can be motivating. It's, it's different. There's, you know, um, especially if they're going long course, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that's, a, that's quite a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I love doing, it. I love swimming in different. I, I, at one point I was rotating between heritage, multi-gen lifetime, and I'd go down to the municipal pool downtown as well, just to yep. have a different, a different flavor and then down to Lake Mead. So let's, yep. let's, um, let's back up and talk about this motivation. And the, the dirty truth is, we all struggle with motivation at some point. There's no one, you know, despite all the fun pictures we put on social media, uh, I struggle with motivation at time. You, you do. struggle with that time. Everyone struggles with it. And so the trick is how do you avoid the low spots that will influence your training in a negative way? Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And the, and the easiest way to do it is just to buy a new bike. There you go. <laughs> Podcast <'Cause>, over. Because <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to ride a new bike. <laughs> but obviously we can't do that. So, you know, what, you know, what is it, John, you think that causes lack of motivation for you? Like, what is it like, what, when, what do you, what do you feel like is, is one of the, the, the pieces? Well, the first thing I uh, look at is stress level. And uh, a lot of times when I'm not motivated to go out and train, it's because I may be overtraining or I've got too much stress from wherever stress is coming from, work, life, whatever it is, on top of, of training. And uh, sometimes that accumulated load just gets to a point where it's too much to, to manage and it, it ends up being demotivating uh, to get out and, and train. And so... Uh, those are probably my low points is when, when the, um, or that's the first thing I look at if I'm questioning, uh, should I go for a run or I'm dreading going for a run or maybe dreading going for a bike ride. I really take a step back and say, what am I doing training wise? What am I doing with stress in my life? Where, where is it coming in? Why, why am I not enjoying something that I enjoy? Yeah, that's, that's really, it, and I guess that could happen in any, in any facet of life, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure that there's things that we all enjoy that, you know, aren't enjoyable at some, at some point, mm -hmm. you know, with the exception of ice cream, <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> um, uh, there's never a time I wouldn't be motivated to have some more ice cream, but really, I mean, just think about it, even like, let's say, I don't know, you're watching your favorite TV show mm -hmm. and you're, you're streaming it on Netflix or whatever. Well, after 30 episodes in a row, right. Mm -hmm. You're going to yeah. be like not motivated to watch 31 anymore. Right. 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 So I think that you, you, you bring up a good point of, 
is stress, but even like the overtraining or overstimulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a, I think that's a big one. I know for me, um, you know, it's, if it's been a long week of work and then add into it a long week of training as well, and then you get to that Sunday long ride and I see like on my plan, I'm like, okay, five hours. Mm -hmm. And this is going to take most of the day and, and most of my, whatever mental energy I have left, you know, is it's going to, it's going to take it. And then by the end of that, I know even before I do it, but the end of it, I know that it's going to be a pretty rough rest of the day Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm already feeling rough or or unmotivated. Um, And then, so what gets me past that? And, Mm -hmm. you know, and I question this a lot and I, and I, I, for me, what gets me past it oftentimes is just, knowing why I'm doing it right and you mentioned mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. like what's the purpose what's the purpose here like what's the purpose of going for this one more five hour ride mm-hmm. is is it going to make a big difference in my next race yeah well the answer is probably not mm-hmm. like one individual session does not make or break any race right so because that's a kind of a go-to for a lot of people it's like okay I'm doing this so I can you know perform well so the problem is, is I, you know, I know better. Yeah. It used to work with me, right? <laughs> but I know, I know that, you know, maybe actually today would be better if I didn't train. I start, I start almost going back and forth with myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, this is going to sound completely mm-hmm. weird, but I have some goals on Strava, mm-hmm. right? So like I have a yearly goal. I want to ride this many miles. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm on like a nine or nine year streak of like mm-hmm. making making that goal. Yeah. I'm not going to say what, I'm not going to say what the goal is, but right. making that goal. I'm like, well, this is going to contribute to that goal. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to December and I'm a thousand miles away right. and it's, it's untenable at that point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so then I start thinking like, for me, I start thinking about things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I start thinking about, you know, I, I, I don't want to disappoint myself. Yeah. Um, and I, this is, can be a negative, it can be a negative kind of feedback though, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I'm doing this so I don't disappoint myself. Yeah. And we've, we've talked about that before, like finishing a ride when you probably shouldn't mm-hmm. or finishing a run when you probably shouldn't just so you don't let yourself down. Mm-hmm. But sometimes that, that, that goes into, into my thought process as well. I don't know what your thought process is, is what actually ends yeah, up getting you going. I, I love this. I, I think these are, these are great pointers and, and uh, trying to get out of it. I, I think what what's also important is to, to recognize the tailspin that we can go in and that we start getting unmotivated, motivated. Maybe we're thinking the goal that we we're shooting for, the race we we're shooting for, it's too overwhelming. You know, I'm having a hard time running two miles now. And how am I going to ever run 26.2 miles or even a half marathon? And then that can be unmotivating and that you're like, well, this is, this is futile. It's not going to, it's not going to happen. And then you just start going, well, I'm going to skip this workout. And, and then you start going down this negative narrative that, well, now I missed this work, just like you talked about. And you're like, well, now you start beating yourself up mentally on that. I mean, these are real things that, that we all have to deal with. And, you know, I, it, it's the trick is, I guess, recognizing it. And then two, arming yourself ahead of time with some ideas on how to get out of it and recognizing it. I think, you know, if, if you're training for an endurance event, it's usually the easy way is like if you run into three people who are just real jerks all day, <laughs> it's usually not them. It's usually you <laughs> because something is going on with you that that everything and anything anyone says you take negatively or you're working against me or. Uh, no, that don't don't doubt me or what have you. And it can get it can get really tough. And I'll, I'll tell you, it can be tough when you have two athletes in the house <laughs> at the yep. same time, because you don't always time your demotivating, you know, at the same time. And then you start worrying about is one going to drag the other down and it can it can be tough. And so I think you know, I, on one hand, I think it's just I, I think people need to know we all struggle with this. And uh, and then I, I think it'll be fun diving in a little bit more on, on what you and I do to get out of it and what, what we've read as well, because we looked up a couple of papers on this as well. And super interesting. So 
you know, the other thing I look at is this. Is, okay, let's say you're, you're unmotivated to swim. Mm -hmm. But you knew tonight at the, at, at the swimming, Michael Phelps was going to be there. <laughs> yeah, right. You go. And he was gonna he was he was gonna guest coach for you that night. Yeah, yeah. Would, would you go? I'd go. Yeah. No matter how bad you felt, right? Yeah. Yeah. You you could barely get out of bed normally. Like, oh Michael Phelps <laughs> is gonna be there tonight. And I'm I will be there and yeah. there, there's nothing that can hold me back. Yeah. And isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. It's like just the the experience in your mind is different. Mm -hmm. And and that's you know, that's enough. Um, I love that because one of the papers that we read uh, addressed this and they addressed this as they described it as a mental fatigue. Exactly. And, and that, you know, in terms of, of motivation and I'm going to look at my notes here. They said there's two real uh, separate components to this. It can affect the drive by increasing the perceived effort necessary for a given task. So I can't do this. I'm too exhausted. Or it can decrease the perceived value of the reward that can be obtained. I obtained. I don't want to do this. It's not worth it. And so you're right. That's a great example of Michael Phelps is like, okay, well, maybe that just gets you out of those two components yep. that either you, you say, well, I can do it, or I'm not that exhausted, or you say, no, this is good per perceived value, but it is interesting that- And it's perceived value. Perceived right? value, that's right. Because that's right. the fact that Michael Phelps is there, is that yeah. actually gonna help you be a better swimmer in your, in your yeah. triathlon you're doing three months from now? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. no. But you're gonna have a story, right? You're gonna say, mm -hmm. hey, Michael Phelps was at swimming last night. And like, no. the, it's, a, it's weird, right? So I guess looking at that and, and reading those papers was trying to figure out ways around these things, right? Mm -hmm. And perceived perception yeah. is I think is, is the is 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 truly the is truly the key mm -hmm. and so what is that perception um you know for me sometimes it'll be something as simple as riding a different bike mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so I've been on the time trial bike a lot yeah you know what I'm, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna ride yeah. the road bike mm -hmm. I'm gonna go do some hill repeats somewhere that I don't normally go and instead of five hours I'm gonna do three hours mm -hmm. and I'm and I'm gonna do my best to just have fun with it. Right, right. And it's amazing how doing something just as simple as that yeah. can turn can turn my day around. Mm -hmm. And I can still feel like a success. Mm -hmm. I can still feel like I have accomplished something. And it might just be something that I have to tweak that's a little bit different. Right, right. Mm, that's great. Well, yeah. and what's interesting is um, the other paper we read sort of speaks to this point is that the motivating factors can be dependent on what type of athlete or even what age you are or what gender you are. Yeah. And so I think this is great, you know, to sit back and say, what motivates me? What mo motivates you? Because those are things that are unique to all of us, to each of us individually, but you got to know what they are. Uh, I, I, I think, especially as you start off on your journey, because you can always come back and land on that. So, John, when I read that, uh, I started thinking about my time working with youth athletes mm, mm -hmm. and like what what motivates yes. a 15 year old yeah. to, to play soccer? Yeah. Right. Because that's not the same thing that motivates me to go do mm -hmm. triathlon. Totally different. Yeah. Right. It's totally different. And so we start thinking about motivation for athletics. It, we all have to come. We all come about it from different places. And, and yeah, in the, in the paper, they were talking about, well, this group tends to this, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's you. No, that's right. right? And, and what ends up, let's say you're a 35 year old who's listening to us. It might actually be those same things that motivated you as a 15 year old playing yeah. soccer. It might, it, it might be, those aren't what motivate me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for each individual person, I, mean, I hate to say this on a podcast about science, but it depends. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and figuring out. Hold on. He's frozen. He's in Albertsons. <laughs> All right. So, oh wait, you, we just lost you. Now you're back. <laughs> okay. So what I was thought, what I was getting at is when we looked at the paper, there was many different areas that depending on age and sex um, motivated you, but it could be completely different, right? So for some people, triathlon is all about health. And that was yeah. one of them. Yeah, that's right. right? He health and longevity. Mm -hmm. And if, if that is your motivating factor, you know, going out on that Sunday ride might actually be like an easier motivator for you. Like mm -hmm. I'm for my long-term health. 
and, yeah. and, and or even my short-term health is why, why I'm doing it. You know, to me, it, health is a huge motivator. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we talked about this on our podcast with, with, with Ron a few weeks ago, um, that, you know, both you and I actually found, you, we found triathlon, I found triathlon as a way to fix, help fix a, a medical issue. Yeah, yeah. And so oftentimes I look, I look to that for motivation. Mm-hmm. It's like, why am I doing this? And is it to, is it to win my age group at a race? I, I lied to myself and tell, tell myself that, but really this is about a healthy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Well, and see what's interesting about that, because that's right, the, the paper, both the papers I think spoke to the age issue and generally the younger athletes are more motivated by performance factors, whereas the older athletes uh, are more interested in the health aspect. Not that the performance isn't important because you and I are both performance driven, but you know, that, you know, you, Triathlon is not a high school sport. Yep. It's not even, but it's becoming a, a collegiate sport, especially for uh, for females and for club uh, uh, sport. But most of the people doing triathlon right now, or ultra runs, even they they're not carrying forward an experience you had in high school with that sport. And so, yep. but there's carryover, you know, because I swam in high school, you know, and so forth. Then you you had the soccer part, and I love the age group soccer. Uh, analogy, but triathlon's unique in that most people will not have started triathlon until they're well past high school or college, and so now they're taking the sport up as an adult. And more than more than likely, based upon what we've read, it's going to be health related. Yes, there's a challenge, uh, which could be a mental health issue, uh, or you know, a physical um, something that you're trying to lose weight or you're just trying to, to be more healthy uh, uh, physical fitness wise. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting one too, right? When you think about the being healthy, because <laughs> you could be losing weight, you could do a lot of other things rather than trap one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, you take on three sports. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a really, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like what does motivate someone to get into like just firstly get into trap on when they're older if, if health is their goal yeah right right because man you picked a really hard thing to <laughs> to, 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 to do you know uh, you could go and just go to the gym and do some classes and yeah. some spin classes and lift some weights and eat properly and man you'll lose weight yeah but instead you've decided to like take on three sports that mm-hmm. are you know inherently difficult all three of them yeah and but but great i mean that's what motivates you it, it's and it can it, shift yeah. it doesn't have yeah. it doesn't have to be static you know and, and uh, i wrote down the motivators from the one paper uh, they they uh, wrote out four themes one was a uh, psychological motive so things like enhancing self-esteem providing a sense of life or meaning or problem solving coping with negative emotions that's that's those are all motivators Another one was social motives, including the desire to affiliate with other runners or triathletes in this case, or recognition or approval from others. That's, that's a motivator and that's great. And then physical motives for running, uh, including general health and weight concern. And then the last one, last thing they had was achievement related motives, including competition with other athletes and personal goal achievement. And these are great. I, you know, I really like thinking about these themes and then you know, where am I now versus where I was five years ago versus 20 years ago versus whenever, uh, that, that's neat to see how that, that can shift. And I think this is the, the reason why I think we're talking about this now is because we're going to talk about tips to get out of it and get out of the unmotivated part. And I think, yeah. I think you have to know the motivation to begin with why yeah. you got into the sport. And then that's going to help you get out of that slump, if you will. Yeah, and I think that often you have to go back to the original motivation, right? Because mm-hmm. the motivations change. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like when I, when I started triathlon, my number one goal was honestly just to finish one. Yeah. To right. finish to finish to finish one. So we talked about this before. This was my wife's birthday wish for me to do a triathlon, mm-hmm. and I was going to do one triathlon, and that was you know, that was my motivation, honestly, yeah. at the time. And it, it was it was you know it was subsequent to like me running and, and trying to get, you know, get fit mm-hmm. uh, through, through running, but it is different how things change. And so oftentimes I think back to like, to what motivated me back then. And 
what motivated me to do my second triathlon yeah. and my third and my third triathlon because once again those aren't the same things that necessarily motivate me now right. but i think that they should yep right because back then i was like oh, well how do i become a faster swimmer faster mm -hmm. biker faster runner what can i do to become faster mm -hmm. rather than like just day in and day out the slog it's like mm -hmm. okay where can you know what can i still what can i improve upon yes and and, and once again that's you know, looking back to the original motivation. Yeah. Right. And I think it's, I think it's important for athletes to, to check in with themselves from time to time and, and think about like, what is it that is motivating you to do this? And, and that it has to be healthy and yeah. uh, it needs to be within your control and to, to achieve that it, whatever that it is. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that, by the way. <laughs> there are some unhealthy motivators. Well, so. And no, but it's that, but it's, it's within your control. Like they're, they're, the one thing that I, I find in talking to a, a lot of triathletes is my goal is to be top five at this race yeah, right. in my age group. Or my goal is to qualify for the world championship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. It's a great goal to have, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be what motivates you because when you show up and there's five people faster than you yeah, right. and you finish sixth, and now you fail. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. Right. You you may have hit every time goal you had for yourself. You swam this, you ran this, you biked this, you had good transitions, mm -hmm. and then you leave feeling hollow. Mm -hmm. And I've and I personally have done that. Yeah. Like, you know, I, you go to a race and I go, okay, my goal is to get on the podium. And mm -hmm. you don't. Yeah. Or my goal is to win and you don't. And really all it all it took was these three guys don't show up today. Yeah. Right. And I win. Yeah, right. And, and I did the exact same performance. Yeah. Right. And my, then, then at the end, I'm happier. Yeah. Right. And this is a mixed up, messed up dichotomy. Um, and I've actually had to really start to, to, to change my mindset around that. Mm -hmm. And I have in, in the last five years, probably, I've really changed my mindset around what makes success. Yeah. You know, even at, uh, at Oceanside this year, I, I really felt that, you know, a couple of weeks before, um, but I was at a really good shot at a podium. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I was sick when I raced and no excuses. And I finished 11th and I was honestly, I was, when I finished, I'm like, okay, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, like, right. On the day with what I had and how my health was, I did the best I could do. Now, if 10 other people wouldn't have showed up mm -hmm. and I would have won, I hopefully would have felt the same way. I mm -hmm. hopefully would have, right? Because that's not, those other 10 people aren't a metric of me right right and i think that's a really hard thing to to really wrap your head around mm -hmm. and, and i don't know if you've kind of went through that metamorphosis in your well, career very much so and I, I i refer to it now as maturing as a triathlete in that you do try to internalize and go after motivators that that you can control i have no. I have, you know, go down and look at my, my uh, trophies down in my garage. I've got a lot of second and third places. <laughs> and it's just because someone faster showed up. But that's, but I look at some of those, and I'm like, that was a great race. That was a great <laughs> race. You know, and because it has nothing to do with my finish place, it had to do with my effort. And actually, uh, Rick, you know, one of our, our great listeners on here, he um, he had posted on on something where, when we start setting time goals for long distance races, half Ironmans or full Ironmans, you, you run into a little bit of a problem because one, you don't always know if the swim's gonna be measured correctly. You don't know what the conditions are gonna be. You don't know, you know who else is going to, there's a lot of things you can't control in terms of what will influence your time for the day. And he said, don't make time goals, make effort goals. Okay. And I really like that because now you can, finish the race and say, did I give it my everything I had for each segment of the race? And then you walk away and it's, you know, then it's a success. So and I, I like that, and, but I also like maybe not everything I had, right? It's like, yeah. was did I do what I planned to do, right? Exactly. Because I, I, I don't want to, once again, be completely bagged after I swim. I don't want to be bagged after I, I ride. I want to be like, did I do what I planned to do? Mm -hmm. You know, did I do what my training yeah. set me up to do, right? Yeah. You know, I think you know, a number we, we, we kind of pushed around a little bit is, you know, on the bike, 85% of your FTP should be your normalized power. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. So if I'm 83, 84, 85, 86, mm -hmm. I'm happy. Yeah, right? great. 
And because I have trained to a certain point and I know that, that, that number and did I give it my all? No, I didn't actually. Yeah. I was, I was smart about it. Um, you know, one of the things that I really look at in, in half Ironman is my back half of my run. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's, just, it's, just, it's the same mentality for me is like, how did I feel in the last five miles? Yeah. Right. 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 Was, was I still running well? I mean, I know I'm going to be slower, but was I still running well? Okay. Then I, I did well today. I yeah. planned it. I planned it well. Um, you know, it, yes, it's a little bit of a suffer fest at the end, but mm-hmm. I, I, I planned it well and I'm successful with that. You know, I don't think, John, you probably have never done this either. You've never finished a, um, a triathlon, hopefully, and thought, oh, I have a lot more to give. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I, I, think, I think that's, I don't know if I've ever met a triathlete that finished and like, yeah, you know, I could go for another 10K yeah, right, uh, right. right now. So it's an interesting thing when we, when we start thinking about, uh, about those races and motivating yourself based off of performance yeah. uh, or, or the, not performance, but the number, right? Like yeah. I think, I think it is right. And then conditions make a huge difference. You know, I can remember doing one race. Um, I think it was one of my best bike splits ever. It was like a 218 or 217 mm-hmm. and in the half Ironman and the wind switched, mm-hmm. right? We end up getting a tailwind both ways. Yeah. Right. Well, it just, it just happened that way. Yeah. Right. It, you know, on a, on a flat course with normal wind or whatever, yeah. I don't do that. Right. I don't do that. And you know, it's the same with these down river swims and um, you know, everyone that went to Oregon and no offense to anyone. Cause I did the same thing. I swam like a 22 or something. Well, that's not my, you know, that's not my PR. That's right. <laughs> right. I, and you know, even if your overall time in Oregon was, a PR okay great so 70.3 PR but it's kind of a BS number right 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 when you know you're a 32 swimmer and you swim a 22 yeah you kind of you kind of got to add 10 minutes yeah right but I don't know I but if that motivates you and yeah. I know and it does because if you start looking at the downriver swims on the Ironman website those ones yeah. that tend to sell sell out the fastest yeah yeah no that that's true and and yeah, it, 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 but it all comes back to where you're, where you're going with uh, is, is it's come back to evaluating your effort. Okay, yeah. so now let's talk about, because I'll be honest, this year has been a tough year for me, really from me January on. And I've struggled a lot with just trying to get out for a run or get out for a bike ride or what have you. So we got we to gotta preface this with, Okay, both of us have done this and we both stopped and looked at our training programs and figured out, okay, where are we, where are we doing things right? Where are we doing things wrong? Okay, and, and then we try to fix that part of it. Okay, so now given that we've done that part, what are some other tricks that you've used to get out the door or maybe not to get out there? I mean, because there's going to be times where you don't want to train, okay? But I think right now, I think what we want to get to is what, what would be a trick where you know... Um, looking back that it was the right time to train, but you just need to motivate yourself to get out. <laughs> you mean, I have so many that I, that I use. Um, I think the, the, the big one for me is, oh gosh, I honestly, I lie to myself all the time. Like yeah, yeah. this is, sometimes it's lying to yourself, yeah, yeah. right? And one of the ones that I do is, okay, go for a half an hour mm-hmm. and reevaluate and reevaluate. Mm-hmm. Right. So if, it's, if I've got once yep. again, that four or five hour bike ride, it's like, okay, you don't, you're not feeling it. Yeah. Get out there, go for a half hour, see how you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, the other super big trick that I have, and I am so lucky that I have a super supportive wife. Yeah. That's is, the first trick is get, yeah. get a good, yeah, a good spouse or partner or friend that you're, yeah. Yeah. That and, is important. And, and for running for me, sometimes motivating, is I'll be like, you know what? I'll just run downhill and I'll have my wife come pick me up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or down, if it's, especially in Vegas in the spring, it's always windy, right? Yes. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna run from here to here. It's 10K, it's gonna yep. be all the tailwind. Yep. And same bike, same with biking, right? If you, you know, if you can figure out a, a place for your spouse to pick you up or your significant other to pick you up, it's like, okay, can you meet me in Jean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. It's going to be a north wind, and I've done that. Where um, it just makes it a little bit more enjoyable. Yep. 
Um, and, it, it, and, and nothing changed. I just enjoyed it more, not having that wind in my face yeah. or, or running. I've done this several times where I run. This is actually more my wife used to work downtown. I'd run downtown from where we live in Summerlin. It's only like a 1% downhill. Yeah, right. Yeah. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Makes a big difference. And I'm like, I'll, I'll run down there and meet her for, you know, she finished work at five o'clock. So I leave yeah. at four and run, run down. And man, it's like, okay, it was good. I'm on a different route. Yeah. I don't normally go on. And a little bit downhill. Yeah. It, it's just, it's easier mentally. And, and, and did it really make my training any better or any worse? No, like that 1% downhill. No, but it will get you going back for the next day. And, but it gets you going back for the next day, right? And and I don't need that all the time because there'll be days mm-hmm. where I'm like I I wake up, I feel great, and I want to kill it, and I'm like, oh, let's find the hilliest route I can possibly do. Yeah. But those are those are some of the little, little tricks. Okay, that, I like kind of, that. that. They come to mind. I like that because I have that down. I have it a little differently, but I adjust my training, and I try mm-hmm. to do something that's doable for that day so that I can do the training again tomorrow or the next day. So. I may say, well, maybe I'm just going to go for a one mile run or maybe a two mile, whatever it is, but I adjust. Okay. I like that. All right. Here's another one I got. Sign up for a race. Yep. That's the easiest one. (laughs) It's like, okay, let's pick out a race that is going to be a good challenge. I want to put it on the calendar. It's going to be exciting to train for. And uh, yes, let's uh, let's put the money down. And now, now that's a motivator for me. I, and I, it's amazing during this last few years, I realized it's a more of a motivator than I actually knew. I always thought I liked the training, which I do, but I actually do like the event. I and and the you know the anticipation, the planning, the travel, and then doing the event, and then talking about the event afterwards. I mean, that's a lot of fun. And so. Knowing that, it, it then is a motivator for me to, to to train consistently leading up to that. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because during COVID, that's what we both did. We, we yeah. created events for ourselves. That's right. That's right. Right. And that that, that helped both of us get through mm-hmm. some some really challenging times when there was no when there was no racing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I know that I, you know, I kept doing the Zwift racing and that was good. But then yep. you know, having the Everesting event and for, for you having that huge Huge Ironman, crazy two-day Ironman you did twice, um, but that motivated you, right? Yeah. And so you're absolutely right. Um, it's, you, we, we mentioned or we talk about all the time, like don't make any big decisions right after a race. Yeah. Well, maybe your big decision, maybe it is a good thing, right? That you sign yeah. up for a race the next day. That's right. Because man, that keeps the motivation going. You're you're mm-hmm. you're, you're feeling you're feeling motivated at yep. that point, and you know that the thing that's going to motivate you to keep going is another race on the calendar mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it's easy after you accomplish a big goal, like finishing a race to not, you yeah. know, to, to not do another one. I got, once again, I know several people that they do a race and then they're done and they three months, four months go down the road and it's like, Oh, I need to sign up for another race. Mm-hmm. And that three or four months, they didn't have very good tr- consistent training. Yeah. And, right, and, right. They're, and they're starting over again and things become really difficult. Whereas maybe if they still had that same race on the calendar, they could have done some more like just the consistent not necessarily mm-hmm. structured training but just some consistent training yep. and then you know wouldn't be so far behind i guess yeah. i love it okay let me give you another one yep. that i do i create a race token so yep. and you've seen these before my yep. wristbands and so now i'm making them instead of buying them so i actually i've got you know, a whole bunch from a whole bunch of different races. So I would make a token, a wristband that, and I put the name of the race that I'm really targeting, you know, one big race that I'm doing, or maybe two or what have you. And right now I've got Indian Wells on here. And I actually did stamp in here in New York City too, is a sort of a fun one, just to get back, you know, sort of try to, you know, start the journey back to, uh, to getting some fitness. And I really, um, this helps me because I'll just be working or be doing something. I'm looking down like, oh yeah, that's what I'm working for. That's what I'm doing is I'm, that's the race or that's just a reminder that this, this is important to me and, and I enjoy it. And so having a token, I've actually also sometimes just carried around my uh, qualifying token for a race and, you know, put it in my pocket and I, I'll walk around with it. And it's like, it's just a little reminder that, this is fun and this is something that is important and uh and enjoy doing it 
So on my uh, uh, on the Garmin watches, you can set your face. So mm -hmm. I was setting it to the next race, like just oh, whatever the, cool. the, the logo for the race was. Yeah, yeah. And so something similar. I looked down and I'm like, oh, oh, that that that's the next that's the next race. Um, and I know people that do that even with their, uh, the background and the computer. I do that. <laughs> oh, you do that? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think that's another, it's another one, even if it's not even the logo of the race, it's like a picture of the city or whatever the, whatever the case yeah. may be. So there, there's little things like that. Yeah. I know you, um, you, you've printed out course maps and you keep them on your desk sometimes. You do. Yeah. That, that, that's another one, right? Like, so maybe on your fridge at, at home, you actually take the course maps for the next race you're doing. Put them on the fridge so in the morning when you're getting ready to going you're looking oh that's what i have to do yeah. and so once again these are these are little um little things that can can help help i think push you little tools that can help push you towards that motivation of and once again i'll go back to michael phelps is going to be there today that's right it's just keeping it at the forefront and so yes my my desktop right now is switched over to indian wells map and i look at the end of the map Every time I turn to my computer on, I got a laptop, it's the same background. And then when I do Indian Wells, I'll change that to a different map for, for the next race. And it's just a nice way to, to keep it in front of me and to keep thinking, okay, this is what I'm, what I'm working for. Again, we're, we don't wanna create a negative environment. Nope. And I, we don't wanna make this sound like it has to be all consuming, but just these little reminders that, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, that what you're working for. Okay, so my next one I wrote down was you got to take the time to celebrate your accomplishments. And so you have yep. these micro celebrations, not just these big celebrations. So there's nothing wrong with celebrating that, hey, you did a three mile run or a four mile run, or maybe you hit a 50 mile bike ride. Celebrate, pat yourself on the back, you know, enjoy that moment, because that's part of what is motivating is you're doing it for enjoyment. Yep. And surround yourself with other people, in my opinion, yeah. that, that care about that stuff, yeah. right? So if, if you go to work and you're like, yeah, I did a 50 mile bike ride and nobody cares, mm -hmm. well, they probably aren't the people you need to tell, like tell somebody else that like knows what that means. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, I can still, it's in my mind often like, you know, doing a century ride is a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. Riding for yeah. riding for hundred miles. And like, you feel a sense of accomplishment and then you tell somebody else like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. And you're like, you don't understand what I just did and how hard that was. Yeah, right, or right. I, I did, I did, I just did an Ironman yesterday. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Was it Kona? <laughs> Were you in Hawaii? No, it wasn't, but it still was hard. Yeah. And um, but I, I, I surround myself with like-minded people. Like John, when I saw, I can still remember, I saw the first time you did a, um, a an indoor ride for a hundred miles. Mm. And I, and it blew my mind because I'd never <laughs> seen, you know, I'd never seen somebody do that. Yeah. And believe it or not, it motivated me to do it. I was training for New right. Zealand, which that's right. hard because that's you know, it's, we're training through winter. winter, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and but 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 still, like having your friends yeah. be the yeah. Yeah. you know be into the same thing and recognizing that. No. Um, because it, one of the things that actually, believe it or not, for me, and it's just the same where you Strava helps motivate. Me, yeah. Right. Yep. In, mm -hmm. Instead of doing the 95 mile ride, I want to do 100 because right. it looks better on Strava. And like some, you know, my friends are going to be like, "Hey, that's cool, right?" Um, you know, I did a I did a crazy bike ride last week. It was 20 miles and 5,500 feet of climbing. Yeah, yeah. And I posted on Strava, and people are like, "Wow, like that's yeah. kind of crazy to do 20 miles and do 5,000 or 5,000 feet of climbing." Like, it helps push you up the hill in the beginning. But it helps. Yeah. It helps yeah. push me up the hill, and yeah. and you know, like, well, how you know. I'm, I'm, I haven't been feeling the greatest, but like, you know, I did a decent time and still felt, yeah. felt, felt good to, to mm -hmm. and it's okay to celebrate. So I think, yeah, and I did. So it, it really is because I think far too often people will say, ah, yeah, no, it's, no, celebrate it. Celebrate because that's yeah. that feeling of, of celebrating an accomplishment is what's going to carry you forward to that next accomplishment. And if you never take the time to take a step back and say, wow, that was really great. Yeah. You, 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 you won't have, you won't be able to sustain the, uh, the effort over a you know, long period of time. And that's the other thing that I, I probably should have started with is that we're always looking at this as a lifestyle. So how do you yeah. stay active over a long period of time? Not just for eight week training program, not 12 weeks. We're talking, how do you build this routine into your, into your lifetime?
Uh, I love right. the fact you said cel celebrate, John. I'm just going to jump in really quick because I think sometimes you know we're taught that we need to be humble, and you yeah. and I are, yeah. are both very humble people. But you still need to take the time when you do do something that is exceptional to yeah. celebrate it and to and, and not to brag, but just to be like let people know, like hey, like. I've been working really hard and this is what I've accomplished. It's, it's kind of like winning an award, right? Yeah, like right. if you go and say, I don't know, you're, you're in the entertainment business and you win a Grammy. Yeah. Are you, are you humble yeah. or do you go and you can be humble and still celebrate? Right. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, this was a great accomplishment. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go have a, you know, cel celebrate and celebrate with my friends about, uh, about this. And it's, and it's not, uh, I don't, I think oftentimes in society, we're afraid to kind of put, put it out there. Like, Hey, we did something exceptional. Yeah. And well, even if it's, if it's exceptional for you, like once you say, Hey, you know what? I did a three mile. It's my first three mile run. Yeah. You know, um, I'll tell you this. She doesn't listen, but my swim coach has signed up for her first triathlon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she came to the pool the other night and she's like, Ted, I did a one, a one and a half mile run, my first time running one and a half miles yeah. without stopping. Yeah. And I'm like, that is awesome. Good right. for you. Like, that's so great. Because for her, that's, that was an epic day mm -hmm. for her. Yep, yep. Right? It's the furthest she ever went without, without stopping. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to let her celebrate. I'm going to celebrate along with her. Mm -hmm. right? and, I, and, and, and it's not, she's not bragging about it. Like that she's proud of, she's, she has pride with it. And I think we, we, we need to allow people to have pride. Totally. And, and I think what sometimes people are afraid of is coming across as even being satisfied. You know, yeah. we're so goal driven that once we even hit a PR or whatever mm -hmm. it is, we're like, well, but if I did this, I'd go a little bit fast. And we're, we're, we're sometimes not able to take a step back and say, wow, I'm really, that, that was really satisfying to do that. And that's not a negative. That's not, doesn't mean that you can't then, you know, up the ante or do something more. And so a lot of times I, I see people explain away their accomplishments and they say, well, yeah, but I didn't tie my shoe fast enough and I should have saved 30 seconds. No, just say, it's okay to say, well, thank you. Thank you for recognizing that accomplishment and I need to recognize it as well. So I think that's really, I think that's part of getting out of these ruts of motivation is to yeah. take a step back. And this is what I'll do. I'll even go back and look at my training log or look back at race results and say, all right, you know what? That was really good. All right. That that's going to help me get out for that next run or that next bike ride. Now, I often think of some of my bigger successes in this sport. Mm -hmm. Like when, when times are, are rough, yeah. I kind of think back to, okay, you know, how did it feel to cross the finish line at that race? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Or how did it feel just to ride that bike split like that successfully with, you know, how did that feel? And boy, that felt really good. Mm -hmm. Do you want that again? Right. Do you want that? Do you want that feeling again? Do you want that hit <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? I, again? Well, you got to get out the door yeah. and you, you, and you got to do this, but the, the, you know, the, the downside to that, and, and you've alluded, alluded to it early, is we also do need to be careful of, of when the lack of motivation is coming because of overtraining, mm -hmm. right? And I think we do need to preface that uh, as we finish off here, is that if it actually is overtraining and overtraining syndrome or yeah. relative energy uh, yeah. issues, then this is a different topic. That's, a and, that's right. And that's take a break recover yep. you're not recovering and so i think that you're right we're talking about not necessarily recovery issue here but it yep. may just be a mental stumbling block that you're that you're running up against so and 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 so you know we can look at, at a few physiologic mm -hmm. things that go into that and i'll just really quickly just kind of outline a few of them so number one is like if you're resting heart rate and which most of us have a, you know, a really low resting heart rate if it starts to elevate on you mm -hmm. that's a good sign yep. If, if you're if you're in your insomnia is getting worse a lot of us struggle with sleep mm -hmm. but if it's literally you cannot sleep mm -hmm. and that's a sign potentially you could be uh, overtraining if you uh, are measuring things like hrv and you're noticing your heart rate variability is is, is decreasing if you're you know getting sick mm -hmm. um often those are all you know early warning signs uh of, of overtraining Mm -hmm. And that's not the time to slap yourself in the face and go find a different environment and do this and do this, right. and this so you can train more. Mm -hmm. um, you need to then motivate yourself to actually to rest. 
That's right. And so be careful with this stuff and, um, and don't just keep, you know, tightening the screws more and more and more because there's a negative side to this. That's right. And sometimes that will, that will send you down a worse path if you are forcing yourself to go out and train, even though you are overtraining. And so I think you're right. And I think that, that what we're talking about is how to get out of a rut. That's not an overtraining issue, but that's what you gotta, you gotta stop and assess all that because that's really, really uh, important. Okay. So here's, here's another thing I do when I start feeling uh, overstressed. So I'll do a to-do list. I make sure to write everything down, both work-related, whatever relationship, whatever you know, whatever the list is, uh, write it out. Because then sometimes it doesn't seem as overwhelming when you can start checking some things off. Or I'll say, okay, I got to get these things done before I go for a run. So then when I do go for a run or a bike ride, I don't have that on my mind, and I'm not feeling as overwhelmed or feeling anxious to get done with my my uh, training to, to get back and, and do something else. Yep. No, I, I, I completely agree. You know, I, I need to do a better job of that. Like I don't do mm. a good job of, of keeping lists. Mm. Uh, now, like triathlon lists I have, like to get ready for races and so that, but like a, a to-do list. And I know I need to do a better job of it because when I do do it, I actually feel better about myself and I feel yep. like I, I accomplish more. Um, so yeah, I, that's a that's something that personally I I I know that I need to do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 hard, but it is. Um, I I have found that really helpful. Like uh, like even this week, I had a number of things I needed to get done. I woke up and I'm like, oh, I can't go for a run. I've got so much to do. So I just go and I start making a list of what I need to get done. And within an hour, I had everything done that I needed to do. And then I'm like, okay, well now I'm gonna go for my run. And now it's time I'm to go. Probably, yeah. I could have gone for my run to begin with and still, you know, just flipped it, but that's just what I needed to do. And, yeah. and I would rather have gotten those things done so that I felt that I could go and enjoy my run. Okay. The other one that you brought up and I really want to highlight this is community surrounding mm -hmm. yourself with like-minded people because you got to lean on them at times. And, and sometimes you got to help someone else. And I actually wrote down mentor and athlete because when you mentor someone now you're actually, you're helping them, but you're also helping yourself and because you've got a lot of experience, you know, you especially, but you know, even athletes that, that are, are watching this or listening to this, your story is important. Your information is important. And by sharing that, that can actually help yourself uh, get out there and, and, and do some additional training. Well, and when you, when you're mentoring it, when you're mentoring others, you can share in their successes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. You know, a few people that I've mentored, you know, they, they, let's say they have a race and, you know, I watch the race yeah, and like yeah. that can motivate me yeah. uh, as well. It's a win-win yep. yeah, for sure. So well, I, I agree. And, and that's one advantage that, that we've had is that we check in with each other each week over these last few, few years. And that's been really motivating. Yep. I mean, there's times that and we've talked about this before we've gotten on podcasts and we're both sort of drained, but by the time we're done, we're like, oh, that was fun. And now I'm going to go, you know, have a good weekend of training. And, you know, we do the Las Vegas Tri Club spotlights. And I tell you what, I, I listen to some of these stories and you're, they're just inspiring. And it just brings you back to why we do this sport. And so surrounding yep. yourself with other people and, and, and celebrating what their accomplishments are is, uh, is really helpful. Awesome. All right, John. Well, hey, that was a good talk tonight. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Do you have training plans this weekend? I do. I'm going to uh, try to get a longer session in tomorrow because tomorrow's Saturday. And then we've got our last tri club event on Sunday. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously doing setting up for the race is training. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll try to do a little bit afterwards. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's going to be my weekend. How about you? I'm going to try uh, a climb I've wanted to do a long time, a ride. It's called Figueroa. And it's supposedly one of the most beautiful climbs in Southern California. Mm. And so it's like 5,500 feet of climbing. Oh. Um, so be kind of good. And some of it's on dirt. Yeah. So I've, ne I've never done it before because I've always, when I come down here, I've always brought my time trial bike and I actually brought my road bike. I was going to ask you, how many bikes do you bring on this trip? Uh, this, well, I mean, Marie doesn't watch this podcast, so we can tell you this. So she didn't used to come on my training camps. Yeah. And then she realized how much fun it is like to be down in Southern California and her and Cosmo go hiking and stuff like that. 
So I used to bring two bikes. Now I only bring one. Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got a wife and a dog to bring with me now. <laughs> there you go. Um, so anyways, I, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to do that ride tomorrow and then Sunday swim with the sharks. Oh, there you go. That'll be good. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be good. And then uh, hopefully a, a short run uh, on Sunday as well. So awesome. it'll be good. And then we're back uh, early next week and back to the grindstone. School's go, uh, getting right. going. Around the corner. Exactly. All right. Well, awesome. hey, good, good motivating talk. Yes. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, John. Have a great weekend. All right. You too. Talk soon. Okay. Bye.